Hello, 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 it is Millerboy here. So today, guys, I'm going to be showing you part three of how to make a quest for Skyrim using the creation kit. Now, first of all, I recommend you go back and watch in part one and two so you don't get confused about what we're doing today. But uh, secondly, I'd also like to go over what we actually did in part two. So what we did is we just gave some dialogue to Billy Bob. So, you know, we could go up to him and say, do you need some help? And then he'd tell us his problem and we can either accept or decline it. Then we also added a bit of script to once we've accepted it. And what I did is it set the stage to 10 and the objective display to 10. Now we've actually not done any objectives yet. We've not made any. So that's actually what we're going to do today along with quest aliases. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing you want to go and do is find your quest. So go ahead and expand character. Go down to quest and simply filter it out. So mine starts with mod. There it is. And go ahead and open that up. Now... In the previous tutorials, we've missed out quest objectives and quest aliases. So, the first thing we're going to go and do is we're actually going to do quest aliases first, and you'll see why in a moment. So, go ahead and click on it. Now, in here, you should have a big blank table. So, what we need to do is fill this table up, and the way we do that is right click and create a new reference alias. So, go ahead and do that. Now, the reason we didn't click new location when we were right clicking then is because we're going to reference to act is or an item not a location now in here you, you might not you might be a bit confused about all of this but you may uh, be familiar with some of them so we have things like conditions here we have some scripts at the side uh, package keywords etc but the only thing we actually need to touch in here is the name and the fill type so what we do is we give it an alias name so we're going to be talking about Billy Bob now we're going to reference to Billy Bob so the way we do that give him a name so I'm just going to go with Billy and then in fill type, to reference to an actor or NPC, we create we click the unique actor button. So click that, or the little uh, radio button anyway. So go ahead and click the unique actor, and then click this drop down menu, and then find the NPC. So we're looking for Billy Bob. So there he is, Mod Billy. Go ahead and click on him. And then once you've done that, that's simply all you need to do. So you can click OK now. Now as you can see, my OK button is actually completely off the screen. I've got my start, start bar. bar or taskbar hiding and I still can't see the OK button so a little trick is to just find any text box and go ahead and click enter there we go I've just clicked OK without actually clicking it now the next thing we need to do is create an alias for the enemy so again right click new reference alias should just take a moment here we go so again give it a name I'm just gonna go with enemy and this time we actually can't click unique actor and the reason for that is when we created the enemy we didn't actually create a normal NPC we based them off a template so to reference to NPCs that we've created off a template we need to click the specific reference button now we could have done specific reference for um, Billy Bob but apparently by Bethesda have said that using unique actor saves more memory so always use that if you can but we can't, so we're going to do specific reference. So go ahead and click on that one. And now, on this button here, where it says select force reference, click that, and you should get a window like this. Now, there's two things you can do here. You can either select the reference in the render window. So you click that, and the render window will come to the front, and then you can select the um, the enemy himself. But we've actually not got that cell open, so we're going to use this little drop-down menu. So, if you remember from part one, we placed the enemy in Bree's home because I couldn't be bothered to find in a dungeon. And I know I said I'd move him to a dungeon, but I didn't, so live with it. So, uh, open this drop down menu and go and find Bree's home or wherever you actually put him. So, Bree's home, there it is, white run Bree's home. Now, reference. Now, these are the references inside Bree's home. So, let's go and find our enemy. So, the ID started with mod. There we go, there's our enemy. So, go ahead and click him. Now, once you've done that, you can either click View Reference to, you know, view the one you've selected. But I know that's right, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, once you've done that, again, you're you're basically done for the alias of your enemy. So go ahead and click OK again, or use the special way by clicking in the text box and clicking Enter. Now, there's one more alias we need to create, and that's for the legendary sword, if you remember that we created in Part One. So right-click anywhere again, New Reference. And uh, one more moment and it should open up. Here we go. And now this time we can't use specific reference or unique actor because not we're not referring to an NPC of any sort. We're referring to an object. So the way we do that is we go down to create reference to object. So click that 
And now in this drop down menu, simply select the object. So ours is a sword, and I started off with mod. And no, it's not Billy. It's not the enemy, it's Mod Legend, and if you remember, it was the Legendary Sword. So that's why we gave it an ID of Mod Legend. So go ahead and click the item you created. Now level, now you can put this as what you want, but it won't affect anything because items don't have levels. So I'm just going to leave that as easy. Now the next thing you need to do is where it says create, you, make, you need to make sure it says in, not at. So click the in one. And now the next thing you need to do is in this drop down menu, select the enemy. So what we've basically done here, we've created a reference to the object, Mod Legend, which is the legendary sword, and we've created a reference to it in the enemy. So basically what this, what ha what will happen is when the quest starts, it will basically put the legendary sword inside the enemy. So that's quite useful. Now something I've actually missed out is the name. So remember to always put the name, guys. So I'm just going to call it sword. Oops, not slash. Sword. And then again, once you've done all that, you've done your name and your field type, you can just go and click enter. So, once you've done that, we're basically done with quest aliases. Now, actually, I didn't actually talk about what these are. These are basically just references within our quest. Now, with quest objectives, we couldn't actually do anything without these aliases. As the quest objectives, they can't, uh, basically, they don't know about anything that's not inside this quest. So, we need to go into quest aliases like we've just done and add some references to things outside of our own quest. So we did that with the Billy and the enemy and with the sword. So once you've done the quest aliases, you can go over to the quest objectives tab. So go ahead and click that. Now, the first thing we want to go and do in here is create a new objective. So we right click in this first um, table and click new. Now, select it, the one we've just created, and now here in index, you can actually put what you want in here, but I recommend you keep it the same as your stages. So in our stages, we have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. But um, I recommend, well not recommend, you only need to do 10, 20 and 30 because there aren't any objectives for 0 because we've not started it yet. And 40 is once we've completed it, so there's no objectives for that. So go back to quest objectives and put the same stages. So we're going to start off with 10, like I said, because we're missing out 0 and 40. Now in display text, what this is, this is basically the text that will display once the objective has been started. So you know when you start a quest and then the object quickly pops up saying kill the guy or go and get the sword from the dungeon or something like that. That's basically the text that will pop up on your screen. So we're going to say kill the bad guy. That's what will pop up on your screen. Now the next thing we need to do is create a target reference. Now a target reference is basically, you know that arrow that you see once you know you start a quest? That that will basically point you to an to your objective won't it so our target reference will be where this arrow points so right click and target reference new and now I say no target so we don't want that so click it and now in quest target data we want to select the enemy because we want the objective to point to the enemy so we can kill them so go ahead and click that now again you have conditions down here that you've saw many times before but right now we don't need to touch these so you can just leave this blank now we need to do the same for 20 and 30, so I'm just going to do that quickly. So right click new, put this as 20, uh, display text, uh, this is once we've, uh, oops, once we've killed the enemy, so I'm just going to put get the sword, uh, you know, from its body, from the enemy's body. And again, create a reference, a target reference, so new, then select the sword now, because we want the objective to put the sword in the enemy's body. And then once we've done that, we simply want to go and create another objective, and this is the final one. So again, give this an index, so 30, and the text, and this will be return the sword to Billy. So these are the objectives that are pop up on the player screen. Now let me just add the last reference, uh, target alias, and we want it to point back to Billy so the player knows where to go if he's forgot. So once we've done that, we've basically done the objectives. Now, if you remember when we were doing some dialogue in part two, we actually added a bit of script that set objective display to 10 once we accepted it. So what that would actually do, it would actually set the objective to kill the bad guy. So that's good, but that was basically a safety net in case the thing we're going to do next doesn't work. So what we're going to do next is once you've added your objectives and put whatever text you want in these, go ahead and go back to quest stages. Now the only ones we want to touch again is 10, 20 and 30. And the reason for that is, like I said before, 0 and 40 don't have objectives. 
So go ahead and click on 10 first. Now, as you see, we have a log entry that we added in part one. And so go ahead and click on that. Now, the next thing you want to go and do is we want to go over to this section, which is our little scripting se section. So in here, we want to add two thing, two things. Actually, sorry, we want to add one thing, and that is set objective displayed, and then we want to do an open bracket, and we want to put the index of our quest objective, and it will be 10, if you remember. So this will basically set the objective display to 10. Now, when we when we wrote this in our script, um, in our script in our dialogue earlier in part two, uh, that was basically a safety net in case for some reason this script didn't activate. Uh, there's no reason that it shouldn't, but if for some reason I know why it doesn't, then that was a safety net. Now, the next thing you want to go and do once you've done that is go ahead and click compile. And once you've done that, you want to go over to 20 over here. So go over to stage 20. And you want to do basically the same thing. But this time, before you write set, object, so, bleh, sorry, set objective display 20, you want to do set objective completed 10. So once we get the stage of 20, we want to complete stage, sorry, one, we want to complete the objective of 10. So we do set objective and then we want to do completed. Oops, I've spelled that wrong. Completed. There we go. Then open bracket again and 10. And then close bracket. So if we didn't do that, then the objective would still be not done in the player's quest log. So we need to make sure we complete them all the time. Now the next line we're going to add is, again, similar to what we did in uh, stage 10. Set objective displayed. Uh, I think I spelled that wrong. Displayed. No, I didn't. Never mind. And then type in 20 because that's the objective we want to, um, you know, we want to uh, set. So once you've done that, again, click compile. And then in 30, we want to do more or less the same as 20 but with different numbers. So again, select here and add a more script. So set objective. Oops. Objective complete. Making a few spelling mistakes here. Um, it's vital that you yeah, make sure this is all completely accurate, like all capital letters, etc. Or you may have some problems when you click compile. So uh, that's just a little warning. So uh, 20 here, close bracket. Then another line, and we want to do the displayed one. S oops. Set objective. Um, displayed. 30. So once you've done that, again, compile. Now, I, when I said before we don't need to touch 0 and 40, we actually do need to touch 40 slightly. And the only reason we need to do that is because we need to set the objective of 30 to completed. So once we get to 40, we need to do set, oops, objective um, completed 40. And again, sorry, not 40, 30, my bad. And click compile. So basically, guys, that we basically created objectives for our quest now. So if we go inside the game now, we should have some arrows and some objectives will pop up once we've started the quest, etc. So uh, that's what we're going to go and do now. So I'm going to see you in the game. Just remember to save and stuff so uh, your changes. So I'm going to click OK. Should just take a moment. There we go. And then I'm going to go and click save. And now I'll see you in game. Okay guys, so here we are outside the Riverwood Sleeping Giant Inn, where, if you remember, we placed Billy Bob. So let's go and see if, you know, the objectives that we've just set today actually work. So let's go in. Don't know why I took my sword out then. I'm not really that aggressive. You know, a little bit of a mistake. Anyhow, so let's go and find, where is Billy Bob? Where, where is he? Where's he got to? Oh, there he is. Didn't see him. <coughs> Blended in. So let's go and talk to him. So let's click this. Well, actually, and if you yeah, remember from part two when we set the dialogue, here are the voice files that we recorded. And if you remember the little error that we had, you know, where the voice files weren't playing, I fixed that. That was just a little mistake of me not clicking save. Oh, thanks. So here we go. We've accepted the quest. And what do you know? Look at that. Started Billy Bob's adventure. Wait for it. And there's our first yeah. objective to kill the bad guy. And if you look already, we've got that little arrow pointing to it. So if we open our um, actual quests, quest log. If you see here, I'm just going to click off that. Set this as our main quest, and we have in the quest log, Billy Bob has sent me on an adventure. And we have the first objective, kill the bad guy. 
So let's go and follow this quest marker. Uh, so actually, let's look on the map to see what it looks like. Yep, it's pointing to Whiterun Breeze home because that's where our enemy is. So uh, let's go there now. Let's just do a bit. Oh, can't fast travel from inside. You know what? Going to do a bit of cheating. I'm going to use console commands, guys. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm a cheater. Um, origin. There we go. So we're going right to Whiterun now. Should just take a moment to load. Come on, computer, you can do it. Here we go. So here we are in right, White Run, and uh, if you see the marker, the quest marker, it's pointing right to. Bleh, sorry, it's pointing right to White Run Breeze Home. So that's because that's where our enemy is. So wherever you put your enemy, so say he's in a dunge, dungeon or something, that's where it will point. So I'm going to get ready, and remember if you remember. Uh, bleh, I'm just I'm just talking mumbly jumbly now but uh, if you remember the enemy we set on a hard difficulty so we need to be ready for this so what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna get you know some get really ready I'm gonna get me shouts out I'm gonna do some some fire breath yes I know this character is uh, not very advanced I've not played on him much but here we go let's see if the quest mark is working oh where is he oh no there he is oh no he's after us Oh, let's get back. There we go, guys. It's working fine. Look at it. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, and he's killed me. I did tell you he was really hard to kill. I did tell you that. Uh, we put him on a hard difficulty. But there you go. Now, even if I had killed him then, the objective, you know, to get the sword of his body wouldn't actually have been set. And the reason for that is we've not actually had any scripts to that um, enemy. So when he dies, it sets the stage to uh, 30. Uh, sorry, not 30. 20. So that's what we're going to be doing in part 4. So remember to comment, rate and subscribe guys and I will see you in part 4 when we're going to be doing a bit of scripting and actually getting this this quest ready to actually, you know, to actually look proper and good and working fully. So um, thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.